I did a lot of reading on different history, um, history, Japanese history, Chinese history, and the mythologies of, of sort of, uh, of Asia. But I read a particular book that uh, sort of detailed the history of the ninja from China, which is new to me. I mean, ninja is a Japanese word. Ninjas are Japanese. Um, but I learned that there's this group of Chinese sort of ninjas that claim to be the originator of sort of the assassin thief in Asia. And they call themselves the Lin Kuei. And uh, we learn in mythologies that Sub-Zero is not a ninja, doesn't like being called a ninja. He's a Lin Kuei warrior. Let's get something straight. I am not a ninja. I am Lin Kuei. Scorpion was a ninja. Uh, we chose Sub-Zero as a center point for the first uh, mythologies game because uh, of all the different characters, he alone um, has sort of the most mysterious backstory. His history with Scorpion uh, is talked about a lot, and we sort of vaguely started that story in the first Mortal Kombat game and built upon it in the subsequent games. And what we are attempting to do in this game is go back to his history and sort of explain and show how he became who he is and uh, how his life sort of led up to the first Mortal Kombat tournament. One of the special things about Mortal Kombat Mythologies is that it's actually the first Mortal Kombat adventure game to be introduced to the home. Whereas most of the previous ones were basically a translation of an arcade game, so everybody knew exactly what they're getting. This game is a lot more of a, you know, original element involved in it because you're going to be seeing things that you've never seen before. In a regular Mortal Kombat game, you know, you're fighting one-on-one -on -one with a different person uh, in one room. Here, you, you, know, you, you still fight against the, uh, the computer in one room, but once you're done fighting them, you have a whole other world to, you know, to travel around in. Along the way, there's a bunch of pitfalls. There's pillars that smash on you. Uh, you can fall onto spikes, and uh, there's blades that crush you to death. Or you could be um, fighting in a fire world where you're just trying to get through without being burnt to a crisp. You can go off on a tangent and you know, just explore something maybe that you think might do something, but it may not, but it'd be worth the reward if you can get it to work. Sub-Zero actually uh, gains experience throughout the game, and uh, he gains certain powers, he picks up certain items. It's a cool game. It takes you into the world of Mortal Kombat. It's like an interactive movie. As a programmer, um, I get to implement a few features in the end of the design process that maybe actually some of the other team members don't even know about. The Mortal Kombat uh, Mythologies team in Chicago consisted of uh, seven, seven of us sort of on the main team and also including uh, Dan Forden who did our sounds. The programmers basically took the artwork that was done and handled Sub-Zero traversing through the environments and took care of a lot of the elements with, with the fighting and things of that nature and obviously dealt with issues of the gameplay. The artists did everything from digitizing live actors to building 3D models and, and texture mapping them and, and doing keyframing and motion capturing. And now, on to Hollywood. Alert the keepers and send a full garrison to intercept. Make sure that he does not cross the bridge. The Keepers? But he's just a mortal. Do not question me, Serena. And more importantly, do not fail. We create the full motion videos by shooting live actors against a green screen. And then after we do that, we edit that footage down and then hand it off to the artists. And the artists take it and they composite 3D graphic images behind the, the actors so that it just looks like a real world. To give you an idea of, of how incredible the artists who worked on the FMVs were, uh, we did a scene that consisted of nothing more than a chair and two actors and everything else around them was created in the computer. And when I look at that scene now, it's still tough for me to, to remember what it was like when it was just green. There is more movies in the game than, than you immediately see, and so if you play your cards right, you can see what else is in there. But, uh, and it's, it's a very privileged thing to find this, these missing things. The object of the game is you need 
to go through these different worlds searching for the amulet. Basically, each world has um, a god that you have to fight to be able to get to the next world. I think in playing the game, uh, it's, it's kind of easy to just sort of jump over enemies and, and blow right through it. But it's pretty important that you do a lot of fighting, especially early on. Um, first off, to get used to the controls. Second, uh, because through fighting you collect experience points, and experience points, when gained, are what sort of give you your new powers. I'm going to show you uh, the first wave or two of the uh, game. Okay, so in the very beginning, you're br basically breaking into a Shaolin temple to retrieve a map. And this is your first mission in the game. One thing you want to do is be very careful when you're running into rooms because there could be a monk right behind a door. Okay, next up is the outside balcony. Best thing to do is jump on the wall and then just very lightly tap to the right and you'll jump straight down, hit a canopy, and land safely. Obviously, you have to learn how to do combos. Um, you can fight opponents without learning combinations, but it'll take you a lot longer to finish them off. To start the first punch combo, it's just you hit high punch. When you're in close and a guy hit high punch twice, and you'll immediately go into a, a two-hit combo. One of the best things to do is to take your time going through each world and really go through every nook and cranny and try to find things because later on when you're at the end of the game you might need something that was you know hanging around three worlds back. When Mortal Kombat players first play this game they forget almost sometimes that there is an inventory screen there and the inventory screen can save your life. I'd say the best thing to keep in mind is that when you're running low on health don't forget that if you have some healers in your inventory you want to go in there, select them, and make sure that you use them to sort of boost your health back. The Wind World, which is the second level in the whole game, is, is probably one of the hardest. It's a lot of fun once you get used to making the jumps, which, you know, look a lot more difficult than they are. It's a lot of fun to play. Now, the secret of jumping from windmill to windmill is to jump earlier than you think you need to, right now. In this particular game, the controls of the character are identical to what they have been in the previous Mortal Kombat. The high kicking, high punch, sweep kicks, roundhouses, all of those have been retained. A player that goes through Mortal Kombat mythologies from beginning to end and learns all the hidden secrets in that game could potentially use what he's learned from that game to find some of the hidden features in Mortal Kombat 4. I think a lot more things are going to become clear in the Mortal Kombat universe when people play mythologies. And I think after they've played mythologies and then they see Mortal Kombat 4, these characters will have a lot more. Um, purpose. There's so many different characters and there's uh, so many different stories and twists. And Liu Kang has a history, Raiden has a history, Sonya has a history, Kano does. They all sort of have their own mythologies that we could uh, dip into and, and explore a little bit more. And so in that sense the door is wide open. All right, uh, players, here we are on the outside of uh, Midway Games here in Chicago. And I'm going to take you inside, and we're going to go on a little tour, and we'll meet a lot of uh, developers and people who make uh, the games that you guys play. Uh, we have lunch in here daily, and these are all the different games we play. We got a few people working on, uh, on uh, off-road, looks like, here in the back. Maybe you can get a peek at them. <laughs> Boo. Now we're going to wander over into our uh, office area. Here we're actually editing the video you're watching. 
How you doing, Chris? There, there's myself on the screen there. Chris is uh, doing the editing on the video that you're watching as I speak. Ah, here we go. This beat up, tattered looking studio is where we've uh, shot all of the uh, digitizing for the, for the Mortal Kombat games. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the most secret, secret code I could ever give anybody, and it's the code to our motion capture studio, so we're gonna have to change it after this. It's two, four at the same time, then it's three. Look at that. So next time you guys break into Midway, you know how to get in our motion capture studio. You know, when you work in computers, everything's gotta be clean and pristine. You can't be slobs about anything. When you see guys jump flipping and doing somersaults in Mortal Kombat, they do it off this trampoline. And the reason why we use it is because, you know, a lot of times you got a motion capture guy jumping. So we get him jumping on his trampolines. And we actually have trouble guys, you know, banging their head on the ceiling. That light's out there because somebody whacked it real good. Ah, uh, somebody's in there. Ah. Uh. Here we go. The door was open. Here's our costume room. This is where, uh, whenever we costume anybody, we kind of bring them over here. We've got, here you see Scorpion's costume. Here we've got uh, Shinnok's costume. And uh, what else do we have here? Here's Raiden's. Ah, here, this is cool. Scorpion's mask. Uh, now we're kind of making our way into the catacombs. And as you can see, it says here, closed door means please do not disturb. But, See, there's a little crack here. So I'm assuming that the door's not closed. So we're gonna go in, and this is Ed Boone's office. So here we go. Oh, they seem to be in the middle of, of a deep thought here, putting together a video. <laughs> and they're not too amused, so we'll just leave them. And here, here's our good friend, Eddie Farrier. He's uh, been a playtester here for a few years. Eddie, what's, uh, what's the best game you've ever played? Uh... All right, you didn't hear that. What's the best game you ever played? Sub-Zero. There you go. Uh, here we've got the godfather, the doctor of video games, Eugene Jarvis, creator of all. Uh, some call him God. Uh, what do you call yourself? Ah, uh, face. <laughs> <laughs> That's, <a wrap. laughs> That's good. That's a wrap. Let's end it there. One of the things, I'm not sure how many people know Sub Zero's fatality in, um, in Mortal Kombat 4, but his fatality involves pushing three buttons at the same time. That's it. Nobody even knows. I haven't told anybody that no. one. Yes, uh, there are fatalities in this game. Um, there are only a couple different circumstances where Sub-Zero can do a fatality. Um, and, you know, we don't like giving away clues or hints anywhere. But uh, just for the people watching this tape, uh, in the map room in the temple, uh, Sub-Zero can perform a fatality against Scorpion if you stand about an arm's length away from him and you push forward, down, and forward, uh, and then push high punch, uh, Sub-Zero will perform a fatality. So that's just between you and me, uh, you being the people watching this tape and me being the guy sitting right here. <laughs> that was stupid. <laughs>